the purpose of our study was to prospectively evaluate this new non-invasive approach to colon cancer screening and prevention, stool DNA testing. We designed the study to compare stool DNA testing to the most commonly used fecal occult blood tests, hemocult and hemocult sensa. Our, our overall goal in, in our society is to improve the detection of precancerous polyps and curable stage cancer at a population level so we can reduce mortality from this, this disease. Six percent of the entire population gets colon cancer in their lifetime. That's one out of every 17 Americans gets colon cancer. It's a preventable disease. The problem is relatively few patients are uh, citizens uh, undergo regular screening. In some areas like the state of Minnesota, the, the participation is quite high. It's over 50 percent, but across the country it's, it's less than half of all adults uh, that could be screened are actually screened. One of the problems is that they are concerned or uh, about or afraid of invasive tests like colonoscopy. So we hope that a test like stool DNA uh, measurement will translate into higher participation rates and if the accuracy can be pushed as high as we think it will with next generations, the overall tumor detection or polyp detection population-wide will be increased. We feel a stool DNA test uh, is pushing the accuracy of these tests. Uh, it probably will never achieve the accuracy of colonoscopy. But if the participation rates are higher, the overall detection rates may actually be significantly increased. However good the test is, if somebody doesn't use it, it's worth zero. So the stool DNA testing has the advantages of non-invasiveness, no ball prep. You can send a specimen from your home and don't and they don't really need to go see the physician or take time away from work or daily activities. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's one other uh, advantage that we may see down the road in terms of added value and that we, and we have some early data to support this, that the stool test, the stool DNA test, may be able to, to detect not only colorectal cancer, but perhaps all of the cancers above the colon uh, we call aerodigestive t uh, cancers. And we have preliminary data, which we've presented at national meetings now, that show that stool DNA testing detects cancers in the esophagus, stomach, pancreas, uh, biliary tree, gallbladder, small intestine, as well as colorectal cancer. We even have some data that show that some lung cancers and cancers of the oral cavity and throat can be detected uh, with a stool test. So collectively, all of those cancers together account for more than half of the cancers that uh, kill us as a, as a society. And uh, potentially, they're all screenable with a single non-invasive test. We've tried to um, look at stool DNA testing as a patient-friendly alternative to colorectal cancer screening. Uh, and for, from a patient standpoint, if they could be reassured that the new tests have high accuracy in addition to the uh, incentives of non-invasiveness, uh, time, no time away from work, no, no bowel preparation, no diet or medication changes. We think that patients as consumers would, would uh, be very interested in a test of this nature. Now, in the future, if we could add to the value of the test that it would not only detect cancer and precancerous polyps, but these common malignancies above the colon, from a patient's perspective, that's that's kind of one-stop shop for uh, uh, dramatically increased value. Uh, uh, rather, you know, when we take our car to the for uh, a maintenance checkup, we don't take separate visits for the battery or the tires or the oil change. Uh, we like all that to be done with one stop. Uh, this would potentially uh,
allow fairly extensive screening with this, a, a single test. And currently, there is no screening for those cancers above the colon, so it, it uh, would open the door from a population standpoint for uh, a significant impact.